uh, pardon the interruption. I, I'm, I'm using the uh, free software screen pass on my It has a limit of uh, 15 minutes. Uh, usually, I try to, uh, to, 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 to organize it such way that it will not, it will not finish the 15 minutes in the middle of an argument. But anyway, uh, where were we? We were discussing on the, 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 the external meaning, the, the external dimension of the root meaning of the word in. And we were, I was, was summarizing what was what Kohakas was been saying in the book. Um, so, so law, so in order for, for law to be enforced, in order for a particular set of a, a system of law to be uh, enforced and enforceable, it has to, it has to, it has to be in consistency with some kind of more, some kind of norm. Uh, it has to be consistent with the, the natural order or the natural state of the subjects, those who, upon whom the law is being enforced. Uh, for example, uh, consider this example. This is a hypothetical example and it's a simple, perhaps a cartoonish example, but I, I, I think it, will, you know, it demonstrates the point. Imagine we come to use to the traffic rules, yes. The, the traffic lights, although there there are you know, there are reasons why the red uh, is stopped and green is go, uh, but we can consider that as a kind of convention that we've agreed that we have. Uh, it becomes like a, like normal for us to, uh, to 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 just know that when the light is red, it means stop. When the light is green, it means go. When the light is yellow, it means uh, you get ready to stop. Well, different countries have slightly different uh, conventions. Like um, in Malaysia, after uh, after the light turns red, you just wait and it will turn green. In some other countries, before it turns green, uh, before it turns green, it will blink the yellow light first, meaning get ready to move or something like that. So those are conventions. So now, so it becomes it, it becomes a norm. Okay, forget about the convention part, but it becomes a norm. So it becomes our second nature when we uh, when we you know ride our motorcycles and when we drive our cars uh, in the in the in the roads. Suppose that suddenly, for some weird reason, uh, the lawmakers, members of parliament, they decided that oh, okay, let's change this law. From uh, by tomorrow or by next week or by next month, red means get ready to stop. Green means stop. Yellow means go. What will happen? So you can have that law, and that law can be, you know, it can be argued, uh, it can be justified, uh, it can be accepted, it can be enforced, it can be forced. To enforce, but what would be the result? The result is that people will not be able to abide by that law. It will be, it will be so contrary, it's, it's, it's so counterintuitive, and it will be contrary to norm. So law has to reflect the natural order of the society, the natural condition, the, the, uh, 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 the natural state of the society. So the so, so the, the last meaning. The, the relation between the, the, the judicious power and natural inclination and tendency and norm is that the, if the, the Magna Carta was unenforceable. Why? Because the subjects felt alienated by them. What, what has that got to do with any of, any of us? It was agreed by some this person and that person and and suddenly it's just being enforced on us and you, you don't even have the enough capacity and, and power to actually enforce it. It's, it's, uh, it's just unenforceable. Right? So this happens right, throughout history. So law has to, has to be in some, somewhat in conformity, to some extent in conformity, ideally, or the, the, the better sets of law is the one that is better in conformity with the, the reality or the 
natural order of the, the subject. Okay. So when, when we connect all these meanings, these four meanings, well, the, an image begins to appear that we now we are we're now imagining uh, a society where uh, with with, uh, with uh, systems of law and order, a society that has trade and economy, uh, a society that is uh, that is governed by some kind of uh, some kind of uh, uh, proprieties as well. That there's uh, a mutual understanding of what is right and wrong. Uh, a society, basically, a civil society. Uh, we, uh, in, in the cities, where we, when we when we connect all these root meanings, we will not imagine an isolated individual in some island or some uh, some mountain. We imagine a society. We imagine a kind of city, a huge city, that forms a civilization that lives in a kind of an, an ordered manner, a civil manner. So this is what what appears to our mind's eye when we begin to connect. Uh, this this meaning. Okay, so now we have uh, so, so this is basically what is envisioned or what is intended by the word deem from the manifest and external point of view. So it is a civilization. So the word Medina, which means city, the Arabic word Medina, also comes from the word deem. The word tamadun which means civilization, although it is awkward to use the word tamadun in, in Arabic today, but nonetheless, since it has a system of root, you can you can still justify that like, linguistically, you can justify that this means civilization. And in Malay language, we use the word tamadun to mean civilization. Even if the Arabs today, they don't use that word anymore. They use other words, hadara. Therefore, we can imagine that he implies a civilization. This is from the external point of view. So you can see that these root meanings, they, they are like the, 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 the material, the, the ingredients. Okay? Imagine you want to build a house. Uh, you need what? You need wood. You need concrete. Uh, you need some synthetic material. You need metal, for instance. Say you ask what is what is a house? Define for me a house. You can't say a house is metal, wood, synthetic material, and concrete. That is not a house. So you can take all the, the, the four material and jumble them in one corner, and it won't become a house. But once you put each material, you form each material in the right way, and put them in their right and proper places, in the right relation from one another, the wood becomes the door, the metal becomes the the knob, uh, the electrical system, the piping, the walls, the, the, the windows, the roof, then it becomes a house. So the house is not just this four material, it, has, it, it is this, this four material, but connected in a particular way. So similarly, so that is what uh, uh, an, an object that we can see. What about an uh, object that is in our mind, uh, conceptual, uh, something that has meaning, but it does not have a physical manifestation, at least not directly. So in order for us to understand such things, such concepts, yes, to arrive at that meaning, we assemble up the, 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 the material, which is basic meanings, root meanings. And once it is connected in the proper way, now we have this, this uh, the sum total of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the intended meaning of the intended concept, which is greater than just the sum of the parts. It becomes a new concept altogether. Right? So when we, when we consider Dean in its totality, although it is uh, the result of reconnecting the, the, the basic concepts, but it is a new concept altogether. It's not just a combination of these four concepts. It becomes uh, a different concept altogether, concept of Dean. But now we are just talking about the, the external aspect. Okay, now we move on to the internal aspect, and, and this is where Prophet Latas really elaborates it uh, through and through, almost all the way to, uh, to, to, the, end, to the end of the chapter. Uh, towards the end of the chapter, you will you, you, you discover that how, how it 
relates to the foundation of ethics and morality, how it deals with knowledge, and what the, its relation with knowledge and justice and freedom and this idea of of, of uh, development and progress, uh, the this idea of identity vis-a-vis the problem that the society of today face, the generation gap, and so on and so forth. But the elaboration begins with, similarly, uh, just, just like what we did just now, uh, trying to connect the, 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 the four meanings, the four root meanings, but now the questions that we ask is, uh, is slightly different. It is of a more introspective question, instead of just saying that, oh, in that fitness, it, it, comes, uh, it, it is between two parties in a society, they have economy uh, and the law, not just about that, but a more personal, a more introspective, uh, a more uh, spiritually rigorous questions in relation to this four meaning. So I'll, I'll stop here and uh, let's see, uh, I, I'd like to, 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 uh, to hear your reflections on this um, before I proceed with, the, uh, with some of the commentaries. Uh, I won't be doing a, a total commentary of the chapter because um, we, I don't think we have that, uh, that resource and time to, to do that, that will take uh, I'll just summarize some of the uh, some some of the uh, sections or parts which I deem to be important and worthy of uh, being highlighted for our purpose, and then we will hear again your reflections, uh, and you can answer the quizzes which I will I'll, I'll inform you once it's, uh, it's up, and we'll move on to the next chapter. Inshallah, salam alaikum.